Good evening. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Welcome to our celebration of Mass this evening. Welcome also if you join us online. Um, as you know, the season of Easter tide ends with the Feast of Pentecost. We pray for the gifts of God's Holy Spirit, and then we celebrate, as we did last Sunday, Trinity, that uh, particular way we have of knowing God. And this week, the last of these great feasts that mark the transition between Easter tide and ordinary time is the Feast of the Body and Blood of the Lord. And we give thanks for the presence of the Lord in the Holy Eucharist and a variety of aspects of that reality and that invitation are extended to us in the liturgy of the Word today. Sunday, it's Sunday now, we started Mass, so it's also Father's Day. So we pray for the fathers in our community, the important role and task they have within their families and ask the Lord to be with them, give them, give them courage and strength. To celebrate worthily, we call to mind our sins, we ask God's pardon. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary of her Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to God in the highest and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory, Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father. Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who in this wonderful sacrament leave us a memorial of your passion, Grant us, we pray, so to revere the sacred mysteries of your body and blood that we may always experience in ourselves the fruits of redemption. We make our prayer through you who live and reign with the Father in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Genesis. Melchizedek, king of Salem, brought bread and wine. He was a priest of God Most High. He pronounced this blessing. Blessed be Abraham, by God Most High, creator of heaven and earth. And blessed be God Most High for handing over your enemies to you. And Abraham gave him a tithe of everything. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The response to the psalm. You are a priest forever, a priest like Melchizedek of old. You are a priest forever, a priest like Melchizedek of old. The Lord's revelation to my master, sit on my right. I will put your foes beneath your feet. You are a priest forever, a priest like Melchizedek of old. The Lord will send from Zion your scepter of power, rule in the midst of all your foes. You are, you are a priest, priest forever, forever, a priest, priest like, like Melchizedek of old. A prince from the day of your birth, on the holy mountains, from the womb before the daybreak, I begot you. You are, you are a, a priest, priest forever, forever, a priest, priest like, like Melchizedek, Melchizedek of old. The Lord has sworn an oath he will not change. You are a priest forever, a priest like Melchizedek of old. You, you are, are a priest, priest forever, forever, a priest, priest like, like Melchizedek of old. old. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. This is what I received from the Lord and in turn passed on to you. 
that on the same night that he was betrayed, the Lord Jesus took some bread and thanked God for it and broke it. And he said, this is my body, which is for you. Do this as a memorial of me. In the same way, he took the cup after supper and said, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. Whenever you drink it, do this as a memorial of me. Until the Lord comes, therefore, every time you eat this bread and drink this cup, you are proclaiming his death. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand for the gospel. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. I am the living bread which has come down from heaven, says the Lord. Anyone who eats this bread will live forever. Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus made the crowds welcome and talked to them about the kingdom of God and they cured those who were in need of healing. It was late afternoon. The twelve came to him and said, send the people away and they can go to the villages and farms round about to find lodging and food, for we are in a lonely place here. He replied, give them something to eat yourselves. But they said, we have no more than five loaves and two fish unless we are to go ourselves and buy food for all these people. There were about 5,000 men. But he said to the disciples, get them to sit down in groups of about 50. And they did so, got them to sit down. And then he took the five loaves, the two fish. He raised his eyes to heaven, said the blessing, broke them and handed them out to his disciples to distribute among the crowd. They all ate as much as they wanted and when the scraps remaining were collected, they filled 12 baskets. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. So I was away through the week for a couple of days with the priest colleagues who are part of a support group that we have. The, the theory is you meet about once every month, every five weeks for an overnight. And you read a book, we read it chapter by chapter through the year. Um, we have a discussion about it. We, we pray together, celebrate mass, have a meal, uh, and quite often stay overnight somewhere. And then in the, in the late spring, at this time of year, traditionally we try to get away a couple of nights together and we haven't been able to do that for three years really so we were all very grateful to go away the week passed for a couple of days went up north into the Cairngorms um, and one of the guys went on ahead with bikes and um, on Monday I got on the bus and we went up to, um, to Aviemore and stayed overnight in the hostel and then we walked over the top of Cairngorm the Larry grew it, it, you may know it's a famous Scottish mountain route and it's about 24 miles across the top of Scotland and uh, you've got to be prepared for it because as you can guess the weather in Cairngorm can be anything from spring to winter and change in half an hour and there are no roads so if you start making a fool of yourself it's the helicopters and the Coast Guard so yeah, obviously not ideal don't want to be in the front page of the Daily Record for anything but for that point of um, so uh, it, it's quite daunting to do, but it, it's, it, it's, it's wonderful to achieve. So Tuesday morning, we're leaving at seven because it's, it's an eight hour walk. So uh, leaving at, at seven in the morning. So we're up at 
at six and making sandwiches <laughs> in the hostel. And we could all have done with an extra half hour in, your, in our beds that morning. You can probably guess why. Um, but it was uh, one of the guys was really <laughs> sounding off. He said, I wanted to stay in my bed. And here I am in the kitchen. I'm making sandwiches. Oh, I'm making sandwiches. And he, he was sounding off mightily. And uh, one of the other guys, much more experienced, was saying, it's okay, don't worry, you know, we'll get there. So we duly made our sandwiches up and uh, packed our bag, and off we left at seven. And uh, later that day, kind of pretty well on the top, uh, of, of beginning of the descent back down into, into Braemar, um, we were sitting there in a wee bothy, uh, and it was kind of damp outside, and it was cold, but uh, we were eat, chomping on our sandwiches and, and drinking our tea. And the guy who had been particularly strong said, I'm glad I made those sandwiches. He said, I, I, I wouldn't have made it without some kind of sustenance at this point. Um, he said, all the way up, I was thinking, why am I carrying this weight? Uh, and now I'm eating them and it's going to get me down the, the hill again. Um, and I thought, well, you know, thank you very much because you just written my homily for Sunday for me. Um, it, <laughs> it's... Uh, the Eucharist that we share, yes, it's, it's extraordinarily special, um, and it's a great privilege, and it's a great mystery of the life of the church, that the bread and wine that we take and give thanks for and invoke God's Holy Spirit over becomes the body and blood of the Lord for us, as he said, to do in memory of him, um, and to be all those things that, that the Eucharist is, a blessing from God, that Melchizedek gave the example of, the, the communion uh, around the presence of the Lord that Paul spoke about, the nourishment um, and the sense of we give of ourselves for each other when we gather for, for the celebration of the Holy Eucharist. Um, this, is our, this is our privilege. And over the past couple of years, well, um, getting together with friends is one of the things we didn't do. But getting together as a community to celebrate the Eucharist was something that we certainly didn't do. And... I imagine you, like me, really miss that. Not able to gather here together, particularly at the weekend. Not able to celebrate the Eucharist together. Not able to draw strength from the presence of the Lord. Um, I think in the past, perhaps, Eucharist was looked upon as a reward for being good. Um, I think it's rather an essential nourishment for our journey. Um, it's a way in which we sustain ourselves and each other for the task of Christianity, which we would all recognize as a tall order in these days to love God and to love our neighbor as ourselves, involving the love of ourselves as well as the love of neighbor. And you will all know there are challenges in all of those loves as we have had cause to reflect. So, Eucharist means Thanksgiving. Let's give thanks. The thanks for the gift that the Lord gives of, of himself in Holy Eucharist, the gift of each other, and the gift of nourishment that empowers us for our journey of discipleship. The more we invest, the more we gain. And there are days where it will be difficult for us, but those are the days where we can depend on each other, which is why we gather to do what we do, to give thanks, to ask the Lord's presence and his blessing and strength on ourselves and on each other. To pray for our needs, we stand. As the Church has been granted the privilege of this wonderful sacrament, may she be always faithful to command of her Lord to do this in remembrance of him. Keep her ministers and people reverent in celebrating and receiving Holy Communion. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. May the people of the world be brought to know and to honour the life that is offered in the bread and the wine. 
Give wisdom to all in authority, that they may rule as those who know that the true power comes from above. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Keep us, our families, friends and neighbours, faithful to the truth we have been taught and grateful for the grace we have received. May we and all who are near to us be sustained by the living bread. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Have mercy on those whose bodily hunger keeps them from caring for the thing of the Spirit. Come to them in their need, relieve their suffering, and make their lives whole. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray for the departed who have been fed with the bread of life in this world and have gone to rest. Raise them up and grant them the promised eternal life. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. To these our general intercessions, we add prayer for our own particular and local needs. We remember those who have asked us to pray for them, especially those whom we know to be in particular need at this time. Pray for those who join us online. Ask them to remember us. And as they join us, we give thanks for the gifts that they have. And we pray that soon they will be able to share them with us directly and us with them. And we pray finally for our dead. We remember those who died recently and those whose anniversaries occur about now, especially those we've been asked to remember in prayer. May they all know the presence of God. Lord, hear us. God our Father, you call us to be your people. You ask us to gather in your name to celebrate your presence together with one another. Be our strength, our hope, our courage. Renew us in faith, in hope and in love, we pray through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed, Blessed be, God. be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine, work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Let's stand and pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at our hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all this holy church. Grant your church, Lord, we pray, the gifts of unity and peace, so that those who celebrate this mystery may always recognize your presence. Our prayer we make through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right 
and just. Our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ Jesus our Lord. For he is our true and eternal priest who instituted the pattern of an everlasting sacrifice and was the first to offer himself as a saving victim, commanding us to make this offering as his memorial. As we eat his flesh that was sacrificed for us, we are made strong, and as we receive his blood poured out for us, we are washed clean. And so, with the angels and archangels, with the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as together with all the saints, without end, we acclaim, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them, like the Jewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory. The mystery of faith, we proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life, the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world. Bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis our Pope, John our Bishop, and all who minister in your church. Remember our brothers and sisters fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them to the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, St. Joseph, her spouse, the Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to life eternal, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours, for ever and ever. Amen. At our Saviour's command, formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant our peace and unity in accordance with your will. You who live and reign forever and ever. Peace of the Lord be with you always. Socially distanced, we offer each other a sign of peace.
Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. Grant, O Lord, we pray that we may delight for all eternity in that share of your divine life, which is foreshadowed in the present age by our reception of your precious body and blood. You who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Can I invite you to access the notices in all the usual ways? There's also a, a pastoral letter from the Bishop's Conference of Scotland about the Holy Eucharist. Um, Bishop suggested I might want to read it out, but I haven't. I've just made copies for you. Um, and if you'd like to take a copy, please do it. It encourages our celebration of and participation in the Holy Eucharist. Uh, when you do access the most up-to-date notices, you'll see that Father Andrew and St. Phyllis and Houston and I are getting together over the summer. So one of us will look after both parishes um, to allow the other to go on a summer holiday. So uh, the, the arrangements for that in the timetable are on the usual places. Thank you for being here today. I hope you have a, a nice weekend, um, particularly if it's a Father's Day treat for you tomorrow. And I hope you have a good week ahead too. We ask God's blessing. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go and announce the gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God.